Welcome to curl 7.73.0. This is the release we did today, or I did today. So I packaged everything, I tagged it, committed, pushed it, sent the release notes, blogged about it, posted about this uh, release video thing, and here we are. Um, <coughs> and uh, yes, um, I am Daniel, as uh, some of you know already. So I um, I work on curl full time. I started the project. I founded it. I uh, I do a lot of curl. I work for Wolf SSL. We do curl support. Uh, come get in touch if you need help. Uh, today, I just want to present the release and what we've done in curl since the previous release. So some numbers, a little bit about security, some new features, some of my favorite bug fixes, or at least some bug fixes I want to talk about, and something about the future. Pretty much the same standard old things that we can talk about in a release. <coughs> this is a release video, and I'm going to try to make it a thing, or I've actually tried to make it a thing for several releases now, and I'm linking them from the change log. So if you go to the website and you click on the change log, read about what happened in different releases in curl, you will now see this uh, funny icon, which is a sort of a play icon, I guess. Um, and you will see links to the release video presentations about the different releases. And then, um, yeah, sure. It's just uh, another way to present what we did in, in, in curl for that particular release. <coughs> Starting now, then I'm trying to make them a little bit more concentrated, maybe nicer, and I'm doing them around one of these presentations instead of me walking around some browser and clicking around in links and doing things. In this release, we spent 56 days, that's a full release cycle, eight weeks, that's, that's what we're aiming for in every release. We got help from 63 contributors <coughs> in this cycle, which is um, <coughs> not average, I think it's more than average, and it's uh, one sort of, uh, we do, it's typical for what we've done, uh, we've achieved with releases recently, I would say in the recent year, so we are in that same area, 31 new contributors, most of the new ones are people that are actually reporting bugs and helping out in various ways, so uh, now at 2,270 contributors in the thanks list, 35 people authored commits, and out of them, 17 were new, which I think is pretty good. Eight weeks, 17 new committers. That's more than two new per week. I think that's awesome. 836 commit authors in total. Increasing numbers and um, awesome. <coughs> right, I mentioned we did spend 56 days on this, which is exactly what we're aiming for. So it proves that we didn't do anything panicky, not this time, not the last time, so we're sticking to the schedule. Ideally, hopefully, we will spend 56 days until the next release as well. So we've spent in total 8,244 days since we started curl. <coughs> and this is the 195th release, just five releases away from the release 200. Um, not that I think the 200 will be anything particular special or, or bells or whistles, it'll just be another release, but you know, I like to just, I mean, make a little notice about nice numbers to talk about and celebrate. So there are no security advisories in this release and just I just want to emphasize that because uh, I think it's really awesome when we've managed that. So if you find anything or you suspect anything that is security related in curl, you go to this page at HackerOne and uh, you submit it there. And if you are right and it is a security problem, we will pay you uh, a reward money. A good chunk of money, actually, if you can point out the security problem. <coughs> we are trying to increase the amounts that we hand out so you you're likely to get upwards around one thousand dollars at least maybe a lot more if you can find a serious enough problem it's very rare and i, I can't say that it's easy to find those problems but i encourage you to do that anyway and uh, it'll benefit all of us if you find problems and we pay you for them and everyone benefits 
So what we did, did we do new in 7.73.0? Well, it's first it's a very high number, right? 73. It's, uh, it makes it a really difficult version number to pronounce. But 7.73.0, we're sticking to version 7. I'm not sure exactly when we're going to switch to version 8, but at some point before 7.99, uh, or at least before 7.100. Uh, so we're starting out. I was supposed to do this as an animation vi uh, slide, but I didn't. So first, some new command line options. <coughs> Two of them, actually. So we started out with the, the output dir or output direct. Uh, that's for directory, right? So you can use that when you want to tell curl, the command line tool, where to s store files that you download with the O option, either lowercase or uppercase. Both those options, you know, they get a file name. And, and they now you can actually use output dir to sort of just get the directory uh, or specify the directory in which the uh, file name will be created. Otherwise, it will use it in the current directory, uh, just like before. But with output directory, you can actually, for example, you can use it multiple times if you download multiple files and so on. It's actually a, a requested feature since a very long time, and I finally implemented it. It wasn't that hard, but it's can be really handy. We also uh, now provide a dash dash curves option, which is a really uh, niche option, but it's for, and we only implement it so far for the OpenSSL backend. So it only actually works if you use OpenSSL with curl, which most users do. But uh, anyway, it's with using this, you can specify um, elliptic curve preferences when you do a TLS with elliptic curves. Um, <clears throat> a very rare thing t to actually want to fill with, but you can do it. And perhaps even more importantly, or perhaps more noticeable for, for everyone, is the overhaul of dash dash help. So, you know, most users have used dash dash help at some point in time, and dash dash help has always, since the beginning of time, uh, showed all options that you can do in curl, which now are, what, 236 options or so. and and that's really, it's a wall of text, right? And it's uh, a bit intimidating and uh, hard to find what you're actually looking for because you get you get lost in on in the multitude and everything. So now dash dash help, if you only use dash dash help, it'll only show you a few, well, uh, maybe not the most important, but some of the most commonly used options. And I think there are just maybe 12, 14 of them or so. And then otherwise you need to use dash dash help and a category to get uh, more, <clears throat> well, get information about options within that category. And you can do dash dash help categories to uh, list which categories that exist, basically protocols or authentication or uh, stuff like that. This is an attempt to make dash dash help more helpful, less intimidating, easier to work around. And for me personally, I think it's a, <clears throat> it's a really good step up. It really helps um, ma making it easier to, to work with. It'll be really interesting to get people's feedback on this when, when this gets done. I mean, when people start to use this for real. <clears throat> we introduced three new API calls to curl th and they, uh, they're all pref prefixed the same way and they called curl EC option. And that's a reason, there's a reason why for that. Um, because they're, um, uh, right, you can, uh, sorry, I didn't mention that, but you can also do use dash dash help all if you want to actually get all the options just like before. So you can mimic the old behavior by asking for all options at once. That's a category that includes all options. Um, so you have these new API calls in curl. They're actually API calls to get metadata me metadata about EC options. You know, the e if you're using the lib libcurl, you have the you 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 recognize the curl EC setopt function that is used to set options for upcoming transfers that, that you do with libcurl. And we have a lot of options. I believe they're in the 280 or so of them. And with this, these new API calls, you can actually query libcurl to get uh, information about those options, pretty much if they're numbers, strings, and uh, so on. 
and the um, the idea here is that we provide these functions to allow bindings to libcurl to better figure out what's ex what exists in the runtime libcurl rather than fig them figure that out at the build time which ideally hopefully will make make it easier for bindings to sort of adapt to the running libcurl rather than to the libcurl that existed when you built the binding so should ideally make it easier and and, and uh, to provide bindings to st stay up to date with the libcurl better so you know get a better tighter connection between bindings and libcurl and bindings are an important part of the libcurl using infrastructure there are almost 70 different bindings that i know of for virtually any programming language that you want or can or can pronounce or can figure out so whatever language you're using you can use libcurl in your programs just use the correct binding and with these new api calls um, those bindings should ideally down the road at least enable better bindings and of course i know we're, we're introducing these api calls now and it'll take a long time until all libcurls that actually are used out there actually have these api calls but still i can't let that um, sit in the way for for doing new things okay so we're adding new features and i'm seeing here that uh, yeah my slides here are a little bit broken but uh, I'm, I'm sticking to it I'm, I'm playing with it so we introduced for ssh we we've uh <coughs> sorry just one step back we're introducing i think new uh, nine new features or nine changes that we call in curl for this release one of them being that we're adding a, a new return code for the ssh known hosts that's the kh in this curl kh known hosts so that you can actually deal with known hosts in one more way you can if you connect to an ssh ssh host and your application think is fine you can actually now say replace the the key for that host in the known host file it's a bit subtle read it uh, read up and if you're using ssh you might enjoy this we now in the curl tool we can find the dot curl rc file by using the xdg config home environment variable which is a sort of a attempted standard to for for how uh, linux unix um, systems should find their dot files rather than just using the home variable <coughs> we're enabling mqtt by default in curl and libcurl which um yeah i've i added support for mqtt the protocol a while ago uh, i don't remember exactly how many months ago but uh, i think uh, before the summer i think and um, that was fun and good and it it seems to work and we basically get no bug reports at all but i also think that is because nobody's using it and nobody's using it because it's not enabled by default and people haven't really tried it out so i decided that um, i'll just bite the bullet and enable this by default to make sure that it actually get enabled and this, this would enable users or allow users to actually try mqtt and and if everything is fine everything is fine and, and then they can use it and you know switch on their light bulbs or or read their temperature meters in their uh, iot s surroundings or whatever they're using mqtt for but i also suspect that there might be some bugs and now we can actually get those bugs reported because people will find them when this is enabled by default um for sftp we also now support the a time and m time commands we call them quote commands in curl so you can actually provide custom commands to a server that when you're doing a, a connection or a transfer with curl you can also ask it to do um, commands in uh, associated with that transfer and now you can do a time for access time and m time for modification time to us to a uh, sftp server and actually set those times on a um, remote file well a file in the uh, sftp server Mm. right uh, and uh, that's basically what we uh, did change wise 
new options, new API functions, and some minor features there. And we've done, and this has 133 bug fixes, which is wrong because I actually recounted and, and it's actually 135, but mm, who cares about 33 or 35, right? <coughs> so, um, of course, that's a lot of bug fixes and we're being very liberal when we're counting bug fixes. So some of them are more polishing things and maybe some of them should have been counted as one, but now are counted as three or whatever. It doesn't really matter. We fixed a lot of things. We've improved a lot of things. Um, and I want to mention a bunch of them here. So here we go. We fixed um, a lot of build things. Well, some build things. Um, for example, I, a long time ago, I think, I think it's around 18, 20 years ago, I introduced the script buildconf in the curl directory. So it's a, it is a script, it was a script to um, run to get the uh, configure and everything generated. So it would check that you had the proper version of all the tools involved and so on and invoke the tools so that you would end up with a configure script. You would basically run it if you built curl from git or previous uh, version controls. Uh, now I've re ripped that script out and replaced it with a script that only invokes auto reconf dash fi because it's enough. So basically out with a few hundred lines of custom code, use auto reconf instead. And auto reconf is actually sort of the standard way to do this. So we're just uh, getting in line with all the other auto tools projects. So this is more this is more how it's supposed to be done. We should have done it a long time ago, but now I finally did it, and we got rid of, uh, got a lot of, got rid of a few hundred lines of custom code, scripting, uh, <coughs> and um, I worked a little bit more on our code style check function, the uh, code style check tool check source. So now it's even stricter checks even more details in the code and warns about them. Now it warns about things like if you put an exclamation mark uh, before like a variable or a function and you use a space between the exclamation mark and the variable or function, it'll complain about it. And it'll also complain about uh, when you use do while with braces, if you don't use space between do and the open brace or don't use space between the close brace and the while, it'll warn about it and so on. Just to help us um, unify um, uh, and make the code style even more consistent or an action this is actually mostly for new contributors so when they're when people are submitting pull requests the tool and now correctly identify uh, code style nits which uh, i think it's really handy to have a tool that's that does it for us uh, saves human um, eyes and time and uh, keyboard presses for us to to tell users we have a tool that points out most of the code style mistakes. I removed the so-called scary warning from the CMake build. And I just want to emphasize that we, I didn't actually, we didn't fix the CMake build particularly. We removed the warning and the warning said that uh, warning, uh, the CMake build system is not maintained as good as the other build systems. So be aware, which I, I mean, since we didn't actually change the CMake much we just remove the warning. And with this, I actually, I want to pretty much encourage people to use the CMake build system because I think that will make people use it, find problems, report problems and uh, improve the build. So hopefully that this will actually rather encourage people to, to, I mean, it should make it better down the line. There are still some spots that needs improvements, uh, but um, we'll, we'll go there, I'm sure. We fixed the test suite in several ways. Uh, <coughs> we have this, um, I introduced it a few versions ago. Was it last version? I don't remember exactly when, but we, nowadays we pre-process the, the test files before that we run them. So now we can, we, I've introduced stuff like these macros that you can, that we can use when we write the test file to repeat a pattern into the so if we want to generate a one megabyte content, we can just say, repeat hello uh, 100,000 times. And then we get a really, really large content to use in the test file. Instead of using one megabyte of content in the test file, it reduced the size of a lot of test files because we could 
just remove a load of repetitions in the test files and it made them much more easy to read and I also then introduced this hex macro that allows us to specify binary as hex instead of inserting real binaries in the test files binary data <coughs> it also makes the test files easier to read and understand and easier to transfer in emails and stuff and um, uh, I also introduced the that, um, this version variable in the test suite which is actually the version number of the curl version that is being tested <coughs> and why is that why does that matter it matters because it made it possible for us to actually verify the user agent strings in when we do HTTP requests with with curl in the test suite previously during all the years we've always had a little uh, stripping logic that would ignore the user agent um, header when we did tests for HP with curl so just uh, filter out the user agent compare all the other headers and if are they fine they're fine now we don't have to strip out the uh, user agent header anymore because now we can generate that in the test case thanks to this variable and then I could remove that uh, stripping out of the user agent thing from s over 600 test cases so yeah that was my <laughs> manic uh, use of emacs macros uh, moment this uh, uh, release cycle so i updated 600 i think 620 test cases uh, for this little fix um yeah but it was a net gain so i, I think i removed a few th well maybe a thousand lines of test data with that uh, and uh, we're testing better now so yes I think all in all a uh, nice little polish <coughs> so yeah and we also fixed source code st stuff right uh, and, and then um, for example then I int we introduced the DIN buff the dynamic buffer functions um, also a, a while ago a few versions ago I believe um, and now I've made it possible to use those the same source code functions actually in the curl tool to get the same benefits in the curl tool really and the benefits being <coughs> C code we we can avoid most of the realloc calls in the curl tool and realloc or um, has been has historically been where we have been sensitive to security problems so by reducing realloc and switching to dinbuff we actually make the code less likely to get security problems and we get a um, so we use the unified method to grow buffers and all buffers get a maximum size so they no, no, no buffer can grow boundless which is also another way to make sure that we actually don't accidentally introduce some sort of security problems around those growing buffers excellent way it also changes the build thing a little bit so maybe we will have some issues with curl builds going forward we'll see i think one of the bug reports i just saw uh, this morning was about this okay and uh, and, and i did some other fun things then big i switched the the ping pong logic the code to use dune but when sending commands the ping pong being the, the generic coding in libcurl for handling FTP, SF, S, no, sorry, FTP, SMTP, IMAP, and POP3, the ping pong protocols, the command response protocols. And I've changed the, the, send, the command sending functions to use DIN buff instead of previously doing alloc and free for every function or for every command, which ended up a huge uh, save, save, um, a huge saving in number of allocs made for a typical transfer using these protocols one of my my test cases was ftp that was in that ftp case it used 10 ftp commands to do the transfer and i previously when i started my this little work we did two allocs per ftp commands we had 20 allocs and with after my change i i went down to a single alloc for all those commands so from 20 to 1 i think that was a pretty good um, effort and it will actually then uh, reduce the number of allocs in curl transfers in this way in in other aspects too so 
I think now curl is doing fewer allocations for a typical transfer than we've done in a very long time which I think is good because r alloc free alloc free alloc free is typically um, I'm, I mean pointless if we're going to use the memory again we can just keep it until the next time and it'll be much faster and much better resource wise we dropped support for WinSock version 1 which <laughs> you, uh, people will enjoy of course because um, Windows have supported WinSock version 2 since uh, Windows 95 I believe some patch version or uh, update to Windows 95 so it's been around for a long time and now we've dropped it um, if finally cool we've say, fixed some protocol stuff and with FTP in particular we fixed several I've fixed several FTP things for example um, we finally made sure that if the size command returns a 550 which is which it does if the file doesn't uh, exist uh, we uh, we report a remote file not found immediately previously we would just treat that as one of those the size command doesn't exist uh, just move on because the size command in FTP is an uh, additional command that isn't that didn't exist in the original FTP command set so we have to survive the size command not existing but this was not the case <coughs> We also changed how we deal with the 552 response from FTP servers, which also was one of those response codes from the original FTP RFC 959 from you know the Stone Age. And it actually means that the remote disk is full. So now when you try to upload something and we get a 552 back, curl will actually return this error code back. And, the, and this error code already existed and we already used it for other purposes. Actually, we, I think we only used it for TFTP, but it doesn't matter. We have the, the dedicated return code. And since that's the specific meaning of the FTP response code too, we could just yeah, be more specific about this particular failure, which you can get when you upload or append to a remote file over FTP. I also fixed a problem with FTP over HTTPS proxy and this is rather subtle but when you do FTP over an FTP proxy sorry FTPS eh, I can't really again HTTPS proxy is, is a TLS connection right but FTP over an HTTPS proxy isn't actually TLS in the FTP sense so um, the FTP code would actually accidentally mistake the TLS in the proxy level for being in the FTP level. So it would actually issue commands as if it were doing FTPS, which it which it isn't. So I need to separate FTPS from HTTPS proxy handling. Both are doing TLS, but in different layers. I have to had to fix it. So now FTP, plain FTP over HTTPS proxy should work better it uh, the FTP code still thinks it's doing plain FTP even though it's being uh, transported over a TLS based HTTPS proxy uh, a lot of things to keep keep in mind uh, or sort of keep up with and, and uh, <laughs> maybe even more complicated than doing the SSH protocols over HTTPS proxy which is uh, which I mean SFTP or SCP S SCP or SFTP done over HTTPS proxy. And again, as an HTTPS proxy sets up a TLS connection to the proxy, and then we do the SSH based protocols, which, which then do SSH over that TLS based proxy. Um, and this, my fix here only actually works with the, the libssh2 backend. And we have other two other uh, SSH backends for which I didn't fix this. Maybe I will do that later, maybe not. We'll see about that. Uh, I gave it a quick look and it looked more complicated with those other two backends, so I didn't actually take the step. But I think I mentioned it in the in some documentation somewhere. So um, room for improvement. Have to do something for the future too, right? <clears throat> and woo, what about the future? <sighs> 
The next release, this is 7.73.0, the next release is likely to become 7.74.0 if everything goes fine and smooth and, and we don't get any alarming panic uh, reports here in the next few days or over the weekend maybe. Um, and we have a lot of things lined up and planned for the next release that is reason enough to bump the, the minor version So because, I mean, they introduced changes or features. Pending work, I mean, nothing is really set in stone that it will actually end up in the next release. Maybe it will be in the next Rex release or, or whatever. We'll see about that. Maybe something will be dropped. I don't know. But we're, we're looking at HSTS support, secure trans, strict transport security, which is a HTTP strict transport security, HSTS. It's just a way for, for a HTTPS site to signal that don't contact me again over an insecure method. Basically, stick to HTTPS from this moment uh, for, uh, on, this number of seconds into the future. <clears throat> I want to switch on alt service support by default. Uh, both of these are PRs. All of these that I'm going to mention here are actually existing PRs. So if you're interested in any of these, uh, join the uh, join the pull request on GitHub. Try them out comment we're we're having a pull request for the aws v4 signature authentication which is a um, well the name says it all right it's an amazon authentication method for that is apparently used not only by amazon is actually used by some other cloud providers as well and there's a pretty big pull request in the works that looks fine that i think we're going to be able to land I'm <clears throat> maybe more speculative. I want to remove the projects directory in, in curl, which includes all the pre-generated files for building curl with Visual Studio, which is um, being debated if we are going to do this or not. Some Visual Studio users on Windows says this is the best and I shouldn't do it, but I want to... <clears throat> the reason is that first it's a big chunk of I think that's 55,000 lines of, of uh, data that I could remove by this and also they're generated uh, XML blobs for for a proprietary tool that so I don't like that and we have other ways to build on curl that I want to push people into using the two primary ones being win build which is a way to build curl with the Visual Studio make file uh, with a make tool from Visual Studio and make and uh, uh, the second being CMake and CMake can generate Visual Studio files itself <coughs> and by pushing people into fewer build options I'm hoping to get people to sort of put I mean get people behind uh, to unify around fewer options because it'll make them better instead of us being spread out on so many different ways it's also difficult for users to actually re realize which method should they use when they build curl for different platforms <coughs> there's also work on uh, this uh, subtle thing this is a new bit for the share interface so possibly make multiple independent curl transfers share the known hosts uh, handling known host being for SSH connections, you know, the known hosts file that you use l that um, basically verify that the, the remote server is to be used or not. And by using this bit, you should be able to reuse the same file better between multiple uh, concurrent transfers. Five things that are pending. We, I'm not sure we will be able to land them all in this cycle, but it would be fun, right? Um, and if you join in and help us, we could really make that possible. And I really want feedback on all of them, um, in particular for like, you know, learning how, how it actually works for you and what, uh, what doesn't work and so on. What's good, what's bad. <clears throat> the, the schedule says December 9. So that's eight weeks exactly from today. 56 days, so yeah. Let's hope we manage to do that and uh, we should hopefully, I will get back then with a new release and the new release video and everything. 
and if you're ever interested in what's going to be in the next release, what we've done uh, so far in this release cycle, you can always go to this URL because this URL always keeps the current release notes in the works, right? The pending release works that will become part of the next release. Um, I try to keep that updated. I uh, think that basically every week, five days, something like that, uh, possibly even faster if if we do a lot of changes. <coughs> so that's what we're looking forward um, this time. Um, yeah. And as always, if you're running into problems, if you're doing this as a company, uh, talk to me about commercial car support and I will help you fix your problems in no time, porting, bug fixing, adding features, whatever. Uh, this is what enables me to work on car full time. So this is what actually makes a lot of this work. Get in touch. And if you find any bugs, anything, any issues, go to this URL, of course, curl on GitHub or just Google it and submit your bug and tell us about it and we'll get it fixed for the next release. <coughs> Thank you. This is curl and this is the website and this is curl 7.73.0 and uh, thank you for watching and uh, see you in uh, in eight weeks hopefully <laughs>